Hello and welcome everybody. Welcome to Tanz Has Talk, the world's only English language program focusing primarily on Hungarian folk music. I am your host, Kalman Magyar Öcsi. Episodes of Tanz Has Talk, which combine a mix of music and stories delivered by myself, are, are available, as always, on tanzhas.com or on YouTube. Just search Tanz Has Talk and subscribe so you don't miss anything. Um, and today we have an episode of Tansas Talk Interviews. This is where I do delve into long-form interviews with a variety of guests. And um, episodes of Tansas Talk Interviews are available on all popular podcast platforms, Spotify and, and uh, Google and Apple, of course. Make sure you subscribe and give me a review, please. Today's episode is a part of the Tansas Talk Masterclass series where I go in-depth, full-on, folky nerd speaking uh, out as speaking um, or geeking out, I guess, as we explore various um, minutia of aspects of Hungarian folk music and sometimes dance with one of Hungarians leading experts on the subject, and that here is Shoma Shalomon from Hungary. Shoma holds a DLA, that's a Doctor of Liberal Arts, is a research fellow at the Institute of Musicology in Budapest, a program editor of traditional music genres for the House of Music Hungary, and one of Hungary's most in demand folk musicians and teachers. And as a bonus today, this is a live, first ever live episode in front of a studio audience. We are here at Chipka Camp 2022 in Brooklyn, Michigan, Sauk Valley. And I'm going to turn around and have everybody say hello. Thank you. All right. The price is right. Dun -dun 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 -dun. All right. So today's lecture or master class discussion is with Professor Shalomo Shomo and we're talking about the Nyarad Menta region which is one of the, uh, the, the regions being covered both dance wise and music wise at, at this camp and um, Shomo's expertise uh, in terms of his dissertation work for his, to get his DLA which he completed recently is in this area of Nyarad Menta. What was your DLA about Shomo? Hi, Uchi. Hi. So it's so nice to be here in the Dance House Talks, the first live Dance House Talk with you, and also with in front of live audience. So uh, if the listeners will hear louder uh, during the uh, studio louder during the during the podcast, it will be not artificial. I think. So this show is aired uh, in front of a live audience. That's what they say. Yes. Yeah, okay. So uh, about uh, the, my topic. So uh, I. Your question was what my dissertation is about, right? Yes. Okay. So, uh, actually, my dissertation uh, is about uh, a comparative analysis uh, based on inter-ethnic relations in Transylvanian folk music, <coughs> analyzing and uh, examining one particular uh, body of uh, collected tunes by Bela Bartók, uh, collected in a one particular uh, field working trip in 1914 where he uh, recorded uh, music uh, at the beginning of uh, he began this uh, trip at uh, 4th of April 1914 and, and finished it around the 25th, 25th of April so he spent roughly two weeks uh, in field uh, and uh, in this field uh, field trip it's a very special one because because uh, before uh, this field, field trip Bartok had numerous field trips uh, field recording trips uh, where he uh, recorded uh, uh, ethnic music from ethnic Hungarians, ethnic Slovakians, ethnic Romanians uh, but uh, before this one he basically always did these uh, researches in areas which were uh, mostly ethnically uh, ethnically homogeneous so inhibited by mostly one ethnicity so for example when he wanted to record Seke music he went to Gyergyo which is a Seke territory and uh, when he recorded uh, for example uh, Romanian music he went to the Hunyat county which is a southern part of Transylvania and 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 oh, technically fully Romanian but in this uh, very uh, journey Bartok started uh, his uh, his journey his field recording journey in the upper part of Maros River, north of Sanslegen in Transylvania, and first, uh, in the first few days, he he recorded only uh, villages which are uh, 
uh, exclusively Romanian inhabited villages, Romanian villages, and then he moved through the contact zone between the uh, southern uh, Nyarad Mente, uh, and I, I think that will be the primary focus of, of uh, today's talk, where, uh, which, is, which, is a, which is a Hungarian region, uh, or more precisely inhabited by Sekei Hungarians. So Bartok started in completely Romanian uh, area, then moved through the contact zone with, uh, of, of Romanians and Hungarians, and arrived, or arrived to, to Narad Mente. And uh, this, uh, uh, re uh, this journey, the, the, the material, the tune stack, uh, the items, which are called, musical items, which are called in this uh, field recording, show uh, a pretty comprehensive, uh, uh, comprehensive uh, image of, uh, of the, at first, of the, of the contemporary traditional music of these settlements and also there are a lot of uh, you you can or one can monitor all the inter-ethnic relations between uh, between the traditional music of, uh, of uh, Romanians and traditional music of Hungarians and uh, my focus of course was flute music uh, since Bartok's uh, most of his instrumental uh, records are uh, flute recordings however uh, uh, soon we will show you uh, uh, a phonograph uh, recording from this uh, from this trip from Nyara Dremeta, which will be uh, actually a violin uh, tune. So this is, I think, right up Shoma's alley, because as you know, you may know, not just plays Hungarian music, but Romanian music. Last night at the campfire, there was Balkan music, uh, Serbian, Romanian. Um, uh, uh, what else did we play? All kinds of other stuff. Bulgarian, yes. So I don't say I'm accomplished in these musical styles. Yes, no, no. I'm not saying you're completely comfortable, maybe, in that styles, but but the point is, I think Shoma is very open-minded, and I, I so was Bartok, obviously, with his uh, research. Yeah, uh, sorry, just interrupt yeah. you. That's what, that's a very important thing, because in terms of Bartok's approach, uh, uh, after this journey, where Bartok encountered with with Romanian and uh, Hungarian music and the interethnic relations at the same time. Uh, th this was, I think, the, the how to say the the, the, the first impetus for Bartok uh, uh, to to investigate more uh, more interethnic. So 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 to to, to turn his research his research focus toward interethnicity, and uh, and that's something uh, so that that uh, how to say formed Bartok's approach, and uh, and all the subsequent uh, Hungarian ethnomusicologic ethnomusicology research generations ge uh, generations of uh, researchers had the same approach with ba based by legacy of Bartok, which uh, considers uh, uh, folk music. Uh, in the Carpathian Basin and also in Transylvania, which is a long time multi ethnic uh, territory, as a kind of shared culture and 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 uh, and uh, not necessarily biased towards uh, <coughs> ethnic based ad appropriation of, of of certain musical phenomena. And we can uh, we can uh, we we inherited this kind of approach from Bartok, and Bartok's uh, first impetus was possibly this trip. Mm -hmm. So before we go on to talk about the research history, we will have dance, uh, some show some videos as well, and some uh, listen to some music. But um, let's maybe you could grab the mic, show my idea of to drive the uh, the laptop in the back. But the, let's get our bearings straight on the geography. And if you're watching on YouTube here, I'm going to flip the camera so you can follow along. Yeah. So actually, why we are uh, talking about this region since uh, the the dance and the the dance material of of uh, this year's Chipka camp is uh, folk dance from Nyaracheya, which is in Nyarad Mente. Uh, by the way, it's very important that not, not uh, in the sub-region, which was my focus in my doctoral dissertation, but not far from there. So we can uh, make a holistic or comprehensive overview about all the regions and, uh, and the geographic, exact geographic location of Nyarad Mente. So here we see the Carpathian Basin pretty much, uh, and, and all the names of uh, of areas where Hungarians live are indicated with uh, their ethnographical ma uh, names. It, this map uh, was created, by the way, by uh, Hungarian ethnomusicologist uh, Istvan Pavai. And uh, now I will zoom a little bit and I will uh, escort you to Nyaradmete. <laughs> <coughs> so, we make a zoom here. Yes. So we can see it. This is the Moros River the central part of Transylvania and it's Seke Fjord here and this river is Nyarad. Uh, it's very important uh, that uh, I don't know you see my cursor yes okay so it's very important that Nyarad Mente is part of the so-called Seke Fjord 
Uh, and uh, the CK fraud has uh, different traditional uh, subdivisions, uh, administrational subdivisions than counties, which were in, uh, in, uh, in the Hungarian administration. The CK fraud uh, had, uh, because the, the inhabitants of the CK fraud, the CKs had different legal status in the Hungarian kingdom. Uh, they were always uh, free people, so they were not peasants, uh, as, uh, as uh, so-called Varmegyei uh, Hungarians, the Hungarians uh, 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 from the counties, because the Sekes had a, 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 a semi-military uh, military status, and and uh, and therefore they 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 uh, possess the uh, special legal status. And that was also true for their uh, administrative divisions, which were SEIK. So SEIK or, uh, can be translated in the to seats in English. There was Udvarhely SEIK, Cheek SEIK, uh, and Maros SEIK. These are the, the, the three main SEIKs and Harom SEIK. Udvarhely SEIK, Cheek SEIK, Maros SEIK, Harom SEIK. And these seats uh, were divided to, to subdivisions, uh, few SEIK. And uh, Nyarad Mente was historically uh, belonged to the uh, Szeredaszék Fiusék, but within Morosék. Uh, and it's very important that uh, here, the Felső Moros Mente, here, here we can see the, 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 the border of Székelyföld. So Hungarians living here and uh, other ethnicities living here were uh, Vármegyei. Uh, uh, ethnicity, so they were peasants. They had, they were not not Sekais, and Sekais are here. And and, and as we uh, all know, Sekais has a very uh, uh, unique and very very strong uh, and proud uh, group identity, which is uh, which is because of their uh, their uh, status in the uh, historical Hungary. <coughs> okay, so that's Fesh Morosmente and that's Nyarad Mente. I uh, have a more detailed map with all the. Uh, village names. Here we have the Nyarad River here. So uh, in Nyarad Mente there are three ethnographical subdivisions. First the southern part of Nyarad Mente here is called uh, because, uh, because of its uh, uh, fertile soil which made it very uh, which made it very how to say uh, Agriculture. Uh, agriculture. Advantage. So because 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 of its agricultural activity and and uh, and and because of the the, the vegetable harvesting and the vegetable uh, growing was a very important profession in this region. It's called Murokorsag or uh, Carrot County. <laughs> <coughs> Carrot County by the locals. Um, it's a kind of mocking name actually. Uh, and uh, there is a uh, so-called Sandford which is here, that's the up northern upper uh, Nyarad Mente, <coughs> northern upper Nyarad Mente, Sandford, it's called Sandford because the other regions, religion in, in, uh, in Nyarad Mente uh, was reformed and the reformed locals or reformed neighbors called uh, this part because they were Catholic, Roman Catholic, they called them Sandford which means Holy Land. <coughs> Yeah, and we also have this part. Uh, as we see, there are uh, springs of, of streams here, because this, that this one is a mount called Bekech, and this is the so-called Bekechaya, where Nyaracaya, actually the village uh, uh, from which the, the, the current material uh, <coughs> comes, sorry, is and Nyarad Magyarosh as well. So. We have Sandföld, Bekecsalja, and Murokország. My astro needs some water. <coughs> okay, so this is the basic geographic overview. Do we all see Nyarad Sheja? Well, let's uh, point to Nyarad Sheja, yeah. which is up there, oh, very, up very, very, and to very, the right. Oh, where is the cursor? I, I don't find the arrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah right there. So, and you can point to it uh, with your finger. I'll show you so we see. Okay, so this is an area that, to be honest, we don't really talk much about. You know, it's not one of the usual suspects in terms of the discussion of Mezushi, Kalotasek, etc. So, um, you know, it, it, but it's, in terms of the research history, it's obviously got a robust history because, you know, Bartok and those before him were there. So, 
Uh, Shoma, why don't you talk a bit about the, the research history with respect to this area, which I think it might be a little too much information, but I think it's, it's interesting to put it into context as we go into looking at and listening to some of these recordings. Yes. Uh, so the research history of this region, especially the Moro 6, starts in uh, uh, 1908, uh, where when Janos Shaprudi, who was uh, a young ethnomusicologist, also a native of, uh, of uh, the Seke village Kiped, published a monography about uh, the folk music and folk dances of his, his, uh, his native village. And it was a very important thing because Bartok and Kodai, they were urban dwellers. They were ur urban dwellers, so they had no connection by this time with the uh, with, uh, so they were just rookies, uh, actually, in this, in this, in this period. Uh, in the meantime, Shepard he was a trained uh, musicologist, but actually, uh, uh, originally, a uh, villager Seikai. So, uh, in, his, uh, in his monograph, uh, which is called Seikai Tanzokro, uh, <clears throat> where, uh, where he just uh, lists all the dance names, all the dance cycles, all the phenomena, <coughs> Phenomena in dancing in Kibed, there uh, Shaprudi uh, uses not only his field recordings, which he did actually with uh, with uh, with his uh, fellow villagers and with the local musicians. Unfortunately, these uh, phonograph cylinders were lost later, but we have all the transcriptions of them. But Shaprudi also used his childhood memories, so uh, he uh, lists uh, lists. Um, I, I don't at least I don't know six to to eight names to each dance, with uh, very uh, variations of local names. So it's a it's a it's a a, a very very valuable source for for the music of uh, of of Kibir. So that was that was Chapter of Dianos. Uh, however, Kibir is not in the Nyarad Mente, but at the beginning of the 20th century, its music and dance was completely identical uh, of uh, with the music of Nyarad Mente. Uh, later, it started to be uh, similar to the Shovideki music, which is in Udvarhei. Later, there was this. Uh, uh <coughs> Excuse me. We need a cough button. <laughs> yeah. So, later, uh, there was this this uh, special uh, field uh, trip of Bartok in 1914, and then in the second half of the uh, 20th century. Uh, the folk dance uh, research and the folk dance filming uh, started to uh, t to begin uh, in uh, in the 60s. Uh, there was Vigvari uh, Reju uh, there, for example, uh, who's, uh, who was one of the one of the one of the most prominent collectors of the of the 1960s. He, he by the way, was not a not a traditional uh, revivalist like Martin or uh, or or or, a, or a ethnomusicologist. But he was uh, a composer in the State Folk Ensemble in the Moise Abira. And uh, the big body. Uh, it's very interesting because, because uh, he still, uh, he's still alive. He's 91 years old. And three weeks ago, I, visit, I visited uh, uh, him with my colleagues from the Institute of Musicology to make a, a, a live interview with him. Uh, and uh, he shared a lot of in interesting things with us. And uh, uh, he he made actually the silent films, for example, in Yaira from which you are learning the figures. And uh, <coughs> uh, and then Martin also made recordings. Martin Jord uh, uh, in Nyarat Madirosh. I, I I hope you'll have a little time to to watch these archive videos. And uh, also we have to mention a very important person who is called Lurin Slayosh who was an uh, individual from Korond. <coughs> so he was an individual from Korond, uh, and he was a kind of uh, 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 a village guy who, who just started to collect uh, folk music without any uh, professional training, but he, he, he became one of the most important collectors of, of Nyarad Mente and also of Shovide, uh, and also the Felsham Rosh Mente. So, for example, Vigvar Vergeu made his recordings together with Nuri Slayer, so, and he was also a choreographer and, and, uh, and uh, uh, leader in the Morosh Ensemble. So he's a very important person in the, in the history of Transylvanian culture in the second half of uh, the 20th century. Uh, 
And also we have to mention one more name who's, uh, who's uh, uh, I'd say, a great fan of this region and, and uh, spent a lot of time with collecting folk music in, in Nyarad Mente, in Felsomoros Mente, who's uh, András Vavinets. And who has been there before? <laughs> Vavinets András has been in Montreal once or twice for the winter camp. Um, Shomo, how about we listen to the 1914 um, recording of Bortok? Can we do that? Oh yeah, of course. Of yes. Course, of course. So now the, the notion that he mentioned, why don't you set that up? And I will, um, I'll just mention this, this notion that one dance has multiple names. Um, you know, we could do example, but there's Chardash or Yartato or, yeah. you know, what, I mean, there's yeah. all kinds of names. So this, this is different because when you go on an isolated recording or field trip and you ask, or field recording trip and you ask somebody, what is this? And he says, Chardash, okay. And then you ask the next person, they say, it's Yartato, it's the same damn thing but you wouldn't know that. So well, that, that's why the work of, 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 of Shepardi, of the early work of Shepardi seems very important because he was able to, to categorize all these various ways people call things into one, and it turns out there's actually only this amount of dances, but everybody calls it something else. Yeah, also, so also Shepardi uh, highlights certain changes uh, in the, in the uh, dance uh, fashions of this time, of his time, so uh, uh, Shepard just writes that the 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 Yartatos, the old Yartatos dance uh, uh, is turning to Chardash in front of our eyes. That was that was mm. the, actually a process which 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 was at the beginning of 20th century. If we have time, I I I I I'd gladly uh, um, talk a little bit about comparing Yartatos with Chardash because they uh, they are actually the the, the same <coughs> dance. The dance cycle beginning slow couple dance yeah. but now uh, we listen uh Bartos recording from Nyarad Remete right so from Nyarad Remete <coughs> this is during his 1914 trip upon which Shomo had based yeah. his his um his dissertation on yes yes, yes. okay so uh, we will see or let's see we'll listen here Muska Laszlo a primash fiddler from Nyarad Remete he plays a shebesh it's very important to tell that uh, uh, his uh, his style and uh, this uh, tune um, was disliked by Bartok actually, and that's the, uh, he 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 writes his, writes this in his uh, letter uh, because uh, as we will see that the rhythmic structure of the tune is quite unstable, and that's why perhaps Bartok did not deem it as as too valuable. He 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 turned towards flute music instead. What music? Flute music. Flute music. Yeah. Flute music. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, my apologies. I got it. If you want to study musicology, you are doomed to a life of listening to that quality of field recordings. Yeah, but actually, you know, after some time, uh, you learn to enjoy these recordings because 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 if if you if if you don't uh, listen to the to the bad quality behind the bad quality, there are beautiful tunes. Yes, and I think I, who recognized that one? Yeah, I did. Yeah, that's a kind of uh, 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 moral sake or forgotten tune, which yes. also appears in, in the in the, for example, the musical fashion show Fava. Yes. Or Mazokopin. So, let's talk a bit about the dance cycle, since we are at a dance camp here, um, and uh, and I know there's some films, but um, Shoma will. I've asked him to talk about the basic dance cycle. I know uh, Suciano, she was teaching, has explained some of this, but uh, let's hear from Shoma the. the the rundown of how the dance from Nyara Shea or Nyara Mente works. Okay, I will start it from long before the 20th, 20th century from the Renaissance. Uh, uh, there is uh, an idiomatic uh, phenomenon within the Renaissance which is called Haroma dance. So the, uh, how to say, uh, trial nature of couple dances. Trial? 
trial, try, try to solve try, the harmony. Try it, try it, try it, try it, try it, try it of 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 the couple dances, which is basically lepu, forgo, ugro. So uh, walking dance, processional, then turning uh, or spinning, and the ugro, which is the jumping dance. Uh, oh, uh, the Transylvanian. Uh, <coughs> The couple dances in in this in, in uh, are in or are derived from this uh, this idiom, uh, which we call Erdi Törstancok. And uh, in this idiom and uh, in the Seke world, uh, the slow uh, and that's why we we call it uh, uh, without any specific names as dance cycle beginning slow couple dance. There is uh, semi slow. Or semi-slow couple dance, which is for uh, forgatosh, and there is fast couple dance. Uh, and the dance cycle begins with uh, with a slow couple dance, which is uh, in nyarad mente called yartatosh. <coughs> uh, yartatosh, uh, but uh, later yartatosh is a pretty old couple dance, so it's it's uh, it, 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 it's I don't know, it's it's originated in, in around the Renaissance. And later, when the chardash as a fashion dance came uh, in, into the Hungarian culture and the rural culture, uh, it was actually uh, a salon fashion dance with very few simple steps. And uh, in the villages, when it just entered the villages, the, this, this phenomenon, the chardash fashion, only the name was replaced in the older couple dance, the Yartatosh. And uh, actually the Chardash was incorporated, Chardash incorporated all the figure, uh, repair, fi figure palette of, uh, of the previous uh, pre-Chardash couple dance. That's why the Chardashes are so different in every village, because they are, uh, not, not just in Yarad Mente, but the Kolodosegi Chardash is so different from a Matoshegi, uh, a Fuzeshi is different from a Palatkai, because these dances were not called Chardash once. That's just a <coughs> newcomer name. Okay. Uh, there are also some melodical, rhythmical differences between the Chardash and Shepherdi was the first and, and you know to, to, to noticing this uh, process that an old dance, an old dance as Yartatosh fades away from the practice. The, the dance steps remain, but the, the, the accompanying tunes of, uh, of, of, the, of the couple dance are changing. Uh, and this discovery, this notice, noticing in the beginning of the 20th century, it was, it was a very, very progressive thing. And, and, and definitely it was, uh, it, uh, uh, Shepard could not dis uh, discover and notice uh, it if it, he uh, wouldn't be a, a local native of Kibid. So. Uh, uh, for example, just just a short story about the, uh, the difference in melody and melody written between the Artatosh and Chardash. Uh, the Artatosh, the old Artatosh melodies are uh, are usually dominated or were usually dominated. We can we can trace it back to the from the from the early recordings by <coughs> uh, so-called uh, big triplets in the in the melody rhythm, which is not triola. The big triplets are like this: so this rhythmic melody rhythm, ta 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 ta, or for a very good example for it is Sabo Victor from Mezőkérpeny. He he plays very consequently in this in this manner, or this this big triplets end, and when Bartók went to the uh, the upper Moros region and the uh, Romanian villages. He, he recorded the same manner and then uh, it was also recorded in the Kurdish Pataki Gyuitesh uh, by Lajta uh, in, in, uh, uh, in the 1940s. So, uh, and then uh, it was just replaced as the Yartatos name was replaced by the Chardash name by the syncopation uh, instead of, of big, big free plans. And there is a very uh, instructive story for that, which is told uh, to me by Pavoi, who, who played a lot of in a lot of weddings with Sobo Victor in this region uh, in the 80s. 
And once uh, Victor started to play this one, and that was a samba from a wedding who was drunk enough to stop him by grabbing the the, the, the neck of the fiddle, <coughs> and he and he told him, "Do not play Romanian. Do not play Romanian. Then what should I play? Play Hungarian." The same tune with syncopation, which and actually it's it's uh, so it was replaced in Hungarian regions, uh, uh, in Hungarian villages it was replaced by syncopation. Uh, however, uh, replaced because and and in by the 80s, local village folk were not socialized in this rhythm, so they they thought it's 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 a Romanian one because the Romanians still kept it, still kept it. And uh, the truth is actually it's, 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 uh, it's not Hungarian or not Romanian, it's Hungarian and Romanian, so it's shared stuff. And that's also true for the syncopation, however, it's mostly in Hungarian because the, the, those, are, uh, those syncopation forms are introduced in, in, in Hungarian villages because of the Polgar Osodash. Which, uh, which is, which is, I, I, I would love to have an English term for that, but there's no proper English term. The gentrification. Gen not, no, yeah, not, that, okay. not the best one, but, but. Uh, now yeah. let's. Uh, I, I do want to. I okay. don't want to make sure we okay. don't run out of time. Yeah, so yeah, we yeah, talked yeah, about yeah, the yeah, the Yartato. Yartato. After the became Yartato. The turning dance. The turning dance. By the way, the same terms Yartato and Forgato were preserved even in locations where in, in the Hungarian ethnicity. Yartatos was replaced the term by Char, uh, to, to Chardas. It's preserved in Romanian settlements where they call Purtata, which is Yartatos, and then they call it Invertita, which is Forgatos. <coughs> Obviously, okay, so Forgatos comes after that, and then uh, the Söktetős or Sebes, uh, as Sheprödi, by the way, calls it Ugros, but you know, Sökni and Ugorni in Seke language, that's quite the same. So, uh, and it has no relation. It's very important. It's, it has no relation with the with the uh, Ugrosh of of the, of the Trans Danubian region of Dunatul, for example. Now, and there we have two. Yes, other because I was going to say we have the three elements from yeah. the Renaissance yes. we talked about: the stepping, the turning, the jumping. But we also learning Varmedish, right? We, we learned Varmedish. Yes. The add-on after the Suktetush, which is a faster yeah. version of the Forgotish. Yeah. What Var the heck is that? Varmedish or Shebesh. Or Varmedish or Shebesh. By the way, that was uh, the tune played by the Dara uh, Primash in the in the in the recording. That's uh, the Shebesh. It's it's called Varmedish because it uh, it comes. So that's very important that the locals will uh, if if an, if a dance originally arrives from outside their so if a if a dance comes into the local repertoire from outside their region of their group identity, they will name it uh, as uh, its suspected origin. Or origin. Uh, it's, and and in, in this case, it's not, it's not a suspection. It comes from the Varmegyei region, which is not Székelyföld. Uh, it's actually the local variant uh, version of the, of the dance, which we all know from the Upper Moros region as Sebes <coughs> And it's very, it's very important, and and, and uh, I think it's uh, uh, it's uh, it's very important to highlight because in the dance house of the home, still a lot of people confuses Felső uh music like Vajda Szentivány and Magyar Péter Laka uh, as uh, Székelyföld. That's not Székelyföld. That was that, that was never part of the Székelyföld. And and it's very important in the local people. If you ask the local, local people, they do not do not have Székely identity because they are not Székely. They were Jobbáj, they were peasants or serfs. And uh, Sekes were never uh, uh, peasants. Okay. Ne ne never, uh, they, were, they were never ruled by nobles, aristocracy, actually. Uh, so then uh, the Shebesh. Mm -hmm. uh, the Shebesh. And it's very interesting that uh, as in the Felső uh, Marosmente, where the Shebesh for the internal part of the local dance repertoire, it's played at the beginning of the dance cycle while in Nyarad Menta it's played at the end of the dance cycle. And also they have Verbung as well. And uh, you know, uh, if I have a little time, because it's, it's actually a, a very interesting and it's, I think, could be a surprising thing to you. That what is the origin of Shebesh Fordlo? Because, because it doesn't fit into this uh, triad. 
And uh, Ishvan Pavoy has a, has a very interesting hypothesis on that. Because if we, if we uh, investigate dances uh, in other parts of... Uh, no, hold on, I get in. Transylvania, for example, the Oranos Vidék, there are, uh, there is a dance called Sherény there, which is originally uh, a dance which has a solo version, which is a male dance, and a couple version. And also in Erdély Hegyelén Magyar Bece, we know the Öreges Csárdás, it has a solo version, as a férfi dance, as a, as a male dance, and also a couple version. So, Sebes Forduló, is perhaps uh, the, re uh, the remnant, the couple reminiscent of a dance which also, which, which was once the Felsőmarosmenti version of Legényes. Felsőmarosmenti version of Legényes. And you know, uh, Sebes Forduló, that's also very kindred uh, term with, for example, Kettő Sírülője. So it's not, not uh, so, so the, the term is not, not the Forduló, is Shebesh, but the Shebesh dance has a four low part. Mm. And perhaps it, there was a Shebesh, I don't know what, something, which was a solo. As Ketush has Ketush Yartatoya and Ketush Shirulya. Shirulya, by the way, it's four You know, that's the same. Shirulya, four dolo, that's the same, mm -hmm. same word. So that's a hypothesis that perhaps, it, because you know, the Legényes, the Erdély Legényes exists in a lot of various locations. In Kalotaseg it exists, in, in Mezőség it exists, it exists as a, uh, in, in, in the Maros Kukülök vidéke ez pontozó, or webbunk, uh, öreg webbunk, or it exists as, as Filoláhos in, in Felcsík or Dimes. But in Felső Maros Mente there is no, uh, no old style férfi tánc, let's dance, only webbunk. And presumably the Sebes Forduló was once something like that. As, uh, as a very similar dance practice exists in Aranyos vidék, with a very similar rhythmic accompaniment and so on. Yes, yeah, for sure. Okay. Um, we've talked about the dancing, now let's see some. Why don't we look at the, there are uh, two examples, like the 1962? 1962, yes, by, uh, recorded by the, uh, the, the before mentioned uh, Rezső Végvári, yep. uh, also by Lurins Lajos. It's a uh, it's from Nyáratsaya. Uh, Ochi, please watch out for the volume. Uh, this is a silent film, yeah? Yeah, no, that's, this, this, you, you don't have to, that's a silent film actually. Yeah. But the, but the next one will be actually the sound. Okay. Well, that's the move. Boy under, then girl under. If you're listening on the podcast, this part you should check out on YouTube. Yeah, these dances, uh, these recordings can be accessed, by the way, the uh, Neptan Studaj archive of the Institute of Musicology. Okay, so these, these are all accessible online. Okay, and now I will mind the volume as we look at <laughs> yeah. Martin Björg, a collection from 1969. Yeah, actually, by the way, this video was put into the internet by Danish Dreisinger, who we own. And, and who, who we greatly miss uh, from here, from the Chipke. Lent van a hang, so mehet. Okay. It's accompanied by an E-flat clarinet and, and violin. They start with the Artutos. Are actually local. That's not a, not an original functional recording. 
these are local dancers participating in a, in the Dunamanti Folklore Festival, which was a which was a folklore festival, and and and, and a lot of uh, village groups were performing on stage. Sometimes choreography is either choreography. This one, this one, however, is not a choreography because the uh, BB can see that they are improvising. And Martin used this opportunity to to record them in Budapest, so it's not made in in Nyaracsaya. It's made in the same venue when he, for example, made the the duties from Kemény Telke, which is with, which is with Romanians. I think it's in the Margit Siget. It's actually an eight minutes, eight minutes long video, so I think we don't want you to. It's on, all. It's, it's on YouTube. So. It's on YouTube, so you can access it, or you can ask it from Danish. Yes, you can, uh, if you can find it. Okay, so um, as the last bit before, we might have a time for a question or two, um, but I would uh, like Shoma to talk about the basic musical setup, the the band, the orchestration, how the band came together in in Yarad Metta region. Yes, I don't want to run out of, run out of time by all means, so uh, just very briefly. Uh, the basic orchestration uh, <coughs> in the beginning and first part of 20th century resembled to the <coughs> orchestration we know from Shovidik. So there was no contra there, no, no, no harmonic accom accompaniment. There was a, a violinist, uh, which was usually, uh, uh, sometimes as a extra added, added uh, E-flat clarinetist. And there was a uh, cymbalom who, who played the so-called prim cymbalmozash, which is a heterophonic melody playing and not a chordic a accompaniment, which is an older version of, of cymbalom accompaniment and, 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 uh, and characteristic of uh, Transylvanian cymbalom music of the Sekeifeld and the Fersumaros Mente. Uh, and, uh, and there was also double bass. So that, that, that's, that's, a, that's the presumed original orchestration of this region, which is similar to the Shobideki. And then, uh, from the second half of the 20th century, uh, uh, the, the praccia, the contra, uh, started to appear in the local, mu uh, local repertoire. Why? Because, uh, because for example, in, uh, in the, not, not in Bekecsaja, but in Sandföld, which, is, which was very close to, to the Felsomoros Mente, to Magyar Péter Baka, uh, there were no local musicians after the 1950s and, and therefore uh, the Péter Laki Zedekar was, uh, uh, was hired to, to, to provide music uh, for the, for the Nyarad Menti Székelység as well. Uh, 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 and, uh, yeah, and this and, uh, is exactly what happened last night yeah. where uh, all the, the 130 violinists we had here with Fazakos <laughs> Levente, which was amazing, played Péter Lak music, no problem. The dancers were dancing the Nyarad Mente. Yeah, meant, yes, uh, actually in Nyarad Shaya they, they were not playing in Peter. Like they had uh, their own musicians because it, they right. played in Sandford. In Beckett Shaya they had their own musicians. Uh, uh, we know uh, recordings from one remarkable fiddler called Kolányos Gábor. Uh, and also uh, in uh, Nyarad, uh, Kolányos Gábor was in Nyarad Magyarors. And in Nyarad Shaya there was Forrai, uh, Forrai Mihály, I think. So they had their own musicians. Uh, that's basically the the, instru the instrument. So there was no contra in the at the beginning of the of the 20th century. That's a very important thing to 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 underline. It's a it's a, 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 a how to say a, a music which is free from the boundaries of harmony. <laughs> <laughs> well, are there any? We have an opportunity to finally have some audience participation. Does anyone have any questions for Shoman? It's okay if nobody does. But yes, I should. Yes. You, but you, yes. So the question is about about Yobai Telke, a nearby region. Yes, right thank area. you for the question. Actually, I missed it. Yobai Telke belongs to the Sandford. It, it belongs below belongs to the to the upper northern Aradmente, to the Sandford. Bartok also collected music in in Yobai Telke in, in his uh, nineteen fourteen field trip. And uh, the Peter Lucky uh, ensemble provided music for the for the, for for uh, the Yobaytaki village folk as well. And uh, there was also a, uh, uh, a person like Lurit Lajos in Yobaytaki who was Bala who was also a local villager who just started to 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 do extensive 
uh, research and, and collection work in the in the in the area uh, a lot of uh, folk dance. It's a, it's a, the dance cycle actually it's quite similar. Yes. Any other questions? Yes, John. Uh, as a uh, Hungarian impaired person, uh, I'm wondering what the sheyad part of nyarad she means. Anything? <laughs> I have no clues. Okay. I so, guess you're too. so we wow. don't know what Cheya means in yeah. Nyarat Cheya, but we know what Magyarosh means in Nyarat Magyarosh. Okay. Che, perhaps, perhaps, perhaps some some uh, term in the local vernacular language which we don't know. So that's that's uh, that happens actually. It's it's very interesting because because for example in the Felső Magyarosh, the Romanian languages, uh, languages language they use uh, the, the local dialect. They use a lot of loan words from 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 the Sekes, but such loan words. Which loan words uh, are, are are in the local Seike vernacular language? So we, we might not even know the Hungarian yeah. uh, loan word, but it's it's it's, it's appearing in the Romanian uh, with Romanian uh, grammar, with Romanian uh, suffixes, with Romanian uh, uh, phonetic rules. So no one will just recognize. And, and and for example, they call the they call the the oven in in uh, in Gurgen, uh, fitio. And, and we did not know when, when I was there with Shegard Sparit that what, 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 the, what kind of Hungarian long, long word can, can it be? And actually in, in, uh, in, in Nyarad Mente, uh, uh, the oven is called Fütö. And from the Fütö is Fütö. Mm -hmm. So the other question, and it isn't really a question, it's just amusing. And that is, um, I, I kind of was aware of this trio becoming syncopation before. I don't know, one of our previous lecturers may have mentioned it. And I thought it might have something to do with the fact that you have natural syncopation in Hungarian lyrics and you do not in Romanian lyrics. It's like you have lots uh, of, because you have long and short vowel and you don't have that in Romanian. Uh, I think there's no relation between the, between the language, uh, the language prosody and, uh, and the syncopation. Okay. Because singing Hungarian in the syncopation uh, 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 lyrics are quite unnatural, so I never, uh, I never, I would never told uh, like a the shonyam that's a bam never so there's no so that's unnatural, uh, very unnatural. Actually, singing Hungarian uh, in songs without syncopation, it's 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 way more, way more natural, way more close to the close to the to the natural, natural and organic uh, internal rhythm of Hungarian language. I heard one theory about the meaning of Shaya, which is Nyara Sela. Can be, can be. Nyara Shaya is Nyara Sela. Can be, can be, which, 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 which definitely means the bank of the Nyara. Yes. Can be, yes. So, uh, any other questions? Yes, go ahead, Mark. Did they, um, like, like traditionally, did they like do standard tuning for like violence, or did they like consciously do alternate tunings at all? Like, like thinking of people like in like a village, like not having a lot of outside. So the question is whether the violin or other instrument was standard tuning, yeah. or did they customize their tuning, or did not know better, so to speak, to go standard? I don't say that, yes, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> Uh, in Nanashe, I, I, I uh, answer you with a with a, a scientific uh, with a scientific uh, answer that uh, we have no information. <laughs> we, have, we have no information of other than a standard tuning. Okay. We say uh, take the fifth. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I think we're out of time, and I would really like to thank everybody for coming and for Shoma to being here and making our little dream come true of making a. Well, a special Tansas talk uh, I hope it's not the last episode. No, no, I'll see you in Florida at the tennis court, yes. Um, so I'll do the usual outro music, and I'm going to flip the camera, everybody gets a chance to say goodbye. So until next time, thank you for tuning in, and uh, thank you, Shoma, once again. Thank you. And thank I think you we all learn a lot more. Thank you so much, guys. <laughs>